so uh, nice to see everybody. When I started talking here, we were like 20 people tops on the meeting. So it's it's happened a lot during the last the last half year. Um, how many have uh, worked with custom view controlled transitions before? And that is the new iOS 7 SDK. <coughs> cool. So some somebody at least have a little feel for it. My name is Simon, and I work currently at Ticktail, uh, where we is trying to get a, an iOS version out uh, to to connect stores better with the, the shoppers. But I'm gonna get right to talking a little bit more about the transitions. Um, with iOS 7, there was a major new SDK or a major new API for, for doing transitions between view controllers. And the transitions you are able to do now is the presentation and dismissals, which, which were previously uh, talked about as models. Uh, the UI tab bar controller can the different transitions between view controllers can be can be uh, customized as well and as well as the navigation controllers and something that I'm not going to talk to you about today which is the UI collection view controller layout to layout transition which the photos apps use for example when you go from the grid view to a specific photo um we got a new snapshot API which is very handy when you do this kind of things so you don't actually have to move move your actual views uh, back and forth view controllers you can actually just take a snapshot of a view or or over a window or or a specific area on the screen and actually use that uh, when you do the transition um, it is blazingly fast, uh, way faster than the old one where you rendered the layer, uh, which makes this very good for for transitions, where stuff have to be pretty fast. Um, I'm gonna dive right into to code, and it's gonna be a lot of protocols here. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna try to guide you through them and later on we're gonna dig in text code and do some coding and if we get the time for it maybe do some live coding but we'll see about that so when you do the presentation and dismissals you create your as pretty much as you did before but you create a UI view controller transitioning delegate which I'm gonna dive in more to later uh, when I do the talk I'm gonna mention a bunch of protocols and then we're gonna try to unwind it together in Xcode later on. Uh, so pretty much what you're gonna remember here is that we set a custom transitioning delegate which confirms to you have your controller transitioning delegate. Uh, and you can always or you can change the model presentation style to custom which means that the from view controller actually stays in the view hierarchy when the presented one is finished, which is kind of nice. Uh, I use it for maybe when you blur the background or something like that. Uh, the, yeah, a lot of code, a lot of long names. We're used to that. Uh, <clears throat> so the UI view controller transitioning delegate, that confirms, well, you're gonna write something that confirms to it, and it is four methods that you should implement. Uh, the two first ones gonna return a UI view controller animation transitioning which is a class you implement which describes how the animation is gonna take part and the later two we're gonna just swipe through them Cocoa style. <laughs> uh, so this one is Animation controller for presented view controller, presenting view controller, source view controller. So this is pretty much you're gonna describe how the well the model style presentation is gonna gonna look. And 
the same one for dismissal. Uh, this usually is the same one, but you take care of that in that class. So you like set a flag on it or something that that says that it's a dismissal, and then you just do it backwards, or that's a way to do it at least. Uh, and the other two is the interactive parts for them, <laughs> and they get past this this other object that you uh, return in the first method. So the like I, I would say ninety percent of all use cases is you're gonna return a percent driven animation there, which is which is a class that Apple provides for you. So you these ones is usually. A one-liner which just walks through the animation you do percent by percent uh, and the same one for dismissal as well um, we have a little bit of super long names in Coco so I was just thinking about adding this one which is I think the longest name in the, it's not in the iOS framework, it's in the OS X one, but we can just have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, I had it on my notes, I have not remembered it, but it's, that slide took like five seconds or something. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a long method. We're dealing with long stuff here. Um, and then, if we go away from presenting and dismissal, it is the UI navigation controller or the tab bar controller. Oh, it's, it's wrong there. But yeah, uh, the first two ones is on the navigation controller, which is uh, the first one is where you return an animation transitioning, which you did in the last one as well. And the second one is where you return the interactive transitioning, which is, as I said, usually just a one-liner for returning the percent one that Apple provides for you. And we can just go through them as well. The only thing a little bit different here is that uh, you get provided the UI navigation control operation, which is pop or push, basically. Uh, I guess the majority of you have already implemented a UI navigation controller delegate some sometime at least, so it's it's it plays nicely along with that old API as well. It just implements two or one additional method. Uh, and as before on the presentation and dismissal, you get the you get the animated transitioning to the interactive part. Uh, and pretty much the same on the tab bar as well. Uh, you get the from and to, and you're going to return the animated transitioning. Here we go, just going to one, two, one, two. So, s finally something that we may be able to remember. Uh, this is the, the thing that you, gone, that you returned in the previous methods, and that actually is doing all the heavy lifting which is two methods, it's three but one is optional uh, and here you're gonna, the, in the first time you're gonna return a time interval which is just the, the total time of your custom transition uh, and this is done because the iOS is doing a lot of things alongside with your transitions uh, for example when you push th something on the navigation stack they are doing their animation in the navigation bar with fading the the back button and such. So you have to provide the the total animation duration, uh, and then you have the animate transition, which is uh, the method that you're gonna actually do all your animate animation. So the easiest example is pretty much do a simple UA view animation in this method. Uh, but here we got another protocol, of course, which is UI view controller context transitioning. Uh, this one provides all the, all the necessary information for you, which is like the initial and final 
uh, rects for the different view control views. Uh, it you you gonna you you're getting uh, if the animation was created by interaction or it, if it was created without any interaction and such. I'm not gonna show this protocol right here because because it's kind of a lot of method, but we're gonna have a look at it in, in code instead. Uh, just going through them a little bit, yeah. And we have something called UI view controller transition coordinator, which is a object uh, on a UI view controller. So let's say in your view you want to animate something alongside with your transition. You're just getting self dot transitioning coordinator, I think. And you get this object and then you can add or animate alongside transition. So you can here you can add code that will animate alongside your whole transition between the two view controllers. Uh, and there is a method for getting a notified when interaction ends. So when the user released the finger, uh, you get notified of that as well. Long, long, long names and a new protocol. <laughs> uh, and this is a context protocol as well. Uh, so this is basically, all the context protocols is more or less classes that Apple provides for you. You're, not, you're never going to, pretty much never going to create a class that conforms to the context protocols. It's just... I don't know, Apple wants this to be super flexible, I guess. Uh, so it's context classes where you basically get a bunch of values that you use when you do the animations. Um, and this one as well, super long. So here are the different protocols that we actually have talked about, where all the context ones in the bottom are the one actually Apple actually provides for you and the transition coordinator they do as well so the three in the bottom is never implemented by you Apple does that for you and pass them along to you uh, and the five above is the different protocols that you as a developer uh, are going to implement uh, where, yeah, pretty much three are new to us. Uh, I think this is all of the presentations, so we're going to jump into Xcode and have a look at it. So what I've done here is a super simple uh, application. I don't know if we can zoom out, but it's a, a small tab bar application which have three view, view controller in it, uh, three tabs, and the last one is a navigation controller. So just let's just fire it up and see how it looks like right now. Maybe we can. Yeah, there we go. So first, second and third. And what we've what we've done here is the app delegate have implemented the tab bar delegate and this method which returned the animated transitioning. So the only thing we do here is we set a flag if we are moving from right to left or left to right, which only takes the index of the view controllers past this delicate method, method uh, and set that as a bool, and then just return ourself as conforming to this protocol. And then we move down to see what we actually do in this. So this is the one where you return the total animation duration and you do the animation. And here is the first context object that I was talking about before. 
which actually gives you a bunch of of stuff to play with. It gives you the container view, which where the animation actually takes part. It tells you if it's animated, if it's interacti interactive, if it's if transaction transition was cancelled and such. It also gives you a way to retrie retrieve all the view controllers taking part in the transition and the initial and final frame for them. So if we jump back here, uh, we let's just break here uh, and switch tab. So what first happened was this delegate method method got fired, and we are asking for the animated transitioning. If we return nil here, uh, the default the Apple default transition will take part, which is just the normal switch. Uh, and then we get jumped down to the animation or where we perform the animation. We, we've taken out the container view, which is the view where the animation actually takes part. So if we just, well, if we just print that, we get a UI view controller wrapper view, which is something we don't have to worry about at all. Uh, if we print there the subviews of it, we see that there actually exists one view already, which is which is the first one, <coughs> this red one. Um, what I'm doing later is so this that should actually be exactly the same as from view controller view <coughs> f zero f zero. So that's exactly the same view as the from view controller's view. Um, so, my animation is pretty much I slide in the view from left to right or right to left, uh, and I do it with some bounciness with the new Spring API. Uh, I view, I'm reading my my bool to make sure which one, which direction I'm gonna swipe it in from, and translated to that to either right or left and then I just set the transform to the identity uh, and when I'm finished with the transaction I called I call completion transaction on the context on the context object I get here so if we move this in round wrong we have jello so basically this is what it's looked like. So it's it's not that much code to actually hook into Apple's transition API, but it's a lot of steps maybe. Uh, on the third one, I had a a navigation controller, which is basically if you tap here, you get back to the first one, and we have the normal swipe back and it gets purple and that's because of if you look I push to the first view controller again um, I did not here we go I push to third and here is the transitioning transition coordinator so here is when you hook in and want to animate something alongside with the whole transition and pretty much only set the the color of it. Uh, when we had have a look at it again it was basically this is the the standard uh, navigation controller actions uh, and we can actually really easy just hook it in to do some custom stuff <coughs> there as well. Uh, the, the navigation controller we set the delegate to the app delegate again. We jump into it and have a look at 
the navigation controller delegate. The thing we do here is we check the action if it's push and then we return ourselves and set the selected to right to yes because we we basically got to use the exact same transition as we did in the tab bar but we uh, so we wanted to push from from right to left uh, and then on the pop side we just return nil to get the uh, apple default default stuff So now it's going to be pretty springy here as well, we hope. There we go. And as I said, we returned nil, so we wanted the default action when we swipe back. Uh, that also, if you have a look, I think it's kind of fast now, but when you return the default action, or nil here, Apple is just gonna cross fade the navigation bar items. Uh, no, <laughs> when I return nil here, it's gonna be the default when the the title is gonna merge with the back button. Uh, and if you do your own one, they're gonna just cross fade it between between the two different navigation items. Um, I think this was it. Uh, I haven't done the thing I haven't done here is is the uh, the old model style which is present and dismiss but there are plenty of examples if you if you google a little bit about all these long uh, protocol names <laughs> so they are kind of handy and easy to find uh, other than that I'm gonna put all of this code to github uh, and the presentation slide and notes as well. Uh, so everything for me. Super.